Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I'm going to show you how to achieve a split screen effect inside of DaVinci Resolve 16 for two, three, or even more clips. So in order to do a split screen, you're going to have to have multiple video clips on separate video tracks at the same point in time for the timeline. For this case, it's important to note that whatever is on the highest video track is going to show on top of the other video tracks. So we should have whatever we want to show on bottom to be on video track one, and if we're going to have three clips like we will in this example, whatever we want to show on top goes on video track three, and then the middle clip will be on video track two. Obviously, if you have more clips, then you would put that on video track four and so on. So let's go ahead and drag some stock clips to the timeline. So I'll go ahead and bring these in. I'm also going to close the media pool and to move the audio uh, checks down because we really don't care about that for this video. So you can see that uh, whenever we go to the part in the timeline where all three clips are layered on top of each other, that the video track three, this one of the moon, is what shows on top. So what we're going to need to do is to keyframe a combination of position and also crop settings for these three clips. And depending on how you want to animate things later, you may need to also add in some zoom to one of the clips like this moon clip to fill the black space that may appear during these simple animations. Um, so to get things started here, I'm going to actually move these other two clips uh, for the, forward in the timeline because I don't want to use them initially. What we'll have happen is that we'll just start with this bottom clip and we'll have it go to the left side and then the second clip will fade into the right side. And then both of those clips will move down as the moon clip on top shows for the top half of the screen. So if you wanted four clips, you would just make the moon clip be over here in the corner and put your fourth clip in this top right hand corner. So we need to find the frame where we want to start animating this clip and moving it over to the left side. So I'll go with here and let's keyframe the position by checking the gray diamond and the inspector. Also open up cropping. The reason we're going to keyframe cropping is that uh, because we're going to basically cut the space of the screen in half for showing this particular clip, we should just get rid of the sides which aren't going to really be as relevant when we're doing that split screen effect. So in this shot, the main focus is obviously the woman walking there with the umbrella. We don't really care about the side parts as much, so those can easily be cropped out to make room for other things. But since we want this clip to move aside for the second clip, it actually makes more sense if we swap the positions of these around. So I'm going to move this one to track one, this one to track two, and then I'll move this clip over when it's actually supposed to come into view. We can click on this little keyframe icon to see the points at which we have our keyframe set. So this is where we have our starting point, but now we need to add in another keyframe to actually make the animation happen. So at this point, select the clip that you want to animate and adjust the position. So if you've already created one keyframe and you change the value at any other point in the timeline for that clip, new keyframes will automatically get created. So if I adjust the position here and move this over to the left, you'll notice that the keyframe icon glows red again. And down here in the keyframe timeline section, uh, you can see a new keyframe was added for transform. So now let's do that cropping I was talking about where we really don't need this extra stuff. And let's add some crop right and have that removed to about the halfway point. We can also add in softness if we want the edges to appear less sharp here. So I was finding about a softness of 10 to be a good value. So I will type that in there. And this kind of will help you blur the line between this clip and this clip. It's up to you if you actually want the softness or not. In some cases, you might think that having a hard edge and no transition there actually looks better. So it really just depends on what you want. Okay, so now we should take this bottom clip and adjust the position. Uh, since we can only use half the screen to show it, we should have whatever's centered in this clip also centered in this right hand section. We're going to need to move this over by about 25% so that the good bits of the clip can show through for our split screen. So now if we go ahead and play this part, we'll have this one clip split screen into two. If you find that this is taking too long, feel free to adjust the positions of your keyframe points. So I can just slide all of these over and make the transition happen much, much quicker. So let's go ahead and play it again. And you can see that the transition is much faster and still smooth. So that looks pretty good. 
So now we're going to want to split it again into three clips. So in order to do that, we're going to need to keyframe now uh, both the bottom clip and this middle clip. So I'm going to keyframe position on both when I want to animate them. And I'll make sure that these keyframes line up so that they move in conjunction with each other. So now let's go to a further point in the timeline and let's bring the position down on these clips. So roughly to about halfway. I also want to add in the cropping softness of 10 to this clip to match the left clip. Type in the softness of 10 there. And let's also keyframe the cropping of the top so that we can have that blurriness. And we'll just pull this down a little bit. And I'll keyframe the crop top as 20 there. Set the same frame where the position comes down here. I'll also set a crop top keyframe of, uh, let's say, 20 pixels there. Um, so that we can have a little bit of blurriness going on for the top bit there. And now I'll go back to the keyframe where the position is just normally there and it hasn't moved down at all yet. And I will set the keyframe for the crop top at zero there because we don't need it yet. And now we do the same thing for the middle clip, basically. So I'll go ahead and keyframe the crop top. We'll move the timeline cursor to snap with those keyframes on the bottom video so that we can have everything line up in terms of time. And I will add a crop top of 20 pixels there. And we'll also adjust the position. So in order to make sure that these positions line up between the clip, I will just copy the transform Y from the bottom clip. So this was negative 469 pixels. So I will just copy that to the top clip. Control C to copy and then Control V to paste it in. Hit enter. And now they should line up perfectly, which is going to make it look a lot better than it otherwise may. So now we can have the third clip fade in. So what I'll do is I'll line up the start of this clip or whatever portion of it that we actually want to use. And I will make this 100% off screen by default. So in order to do that, just make the Y position increased by a number of pixels equal to the vertical resolution of the video. So in this case, that should be 1080 pixels, I believe. So I will keyframe it there at the first frame where the other clips are moving down for the third clip to appear. And then now we go here where they've already moved down and we can adjust the Y position to fill in the void. But we're obviously gonna want the shining moon in the final video. So let's go ahead and actually crop the bottom as well. So I will add in softness of 10 here to be consistent. And we'll just crop the entire bottom until it basically fits that middle section. But now that we have cropping, the animation isn't going to line up smoothly. So you may notice that it takes a while for the top clip to actually get to the right position. Um, now, if we had not used any cropping at all, then it would have moved perfectly with the bottom clips. But the cropping changes the uh, basically calculations here. So we're going to need to just pull this Y position down at the starting keyframe until it gets right on top of the other clips. So if we do like roughly right here and hit play to test it out then we should smooth transition like what we want so so far so good we've had one clip split into two and two split into three so you would just repeat the same basic idea for going to four clips and beyond but now we might actually want to reverse this and have the three clips fold back into a single clip so let's go ahead and do that so the first thing I'll do is pick the point where I want to start our fold out animation and keyframe the position of all three clips. So I'm going to click on the keyframe button in the inspector, select the next clip, keyframe that clip as, and now let's keyframe the bottom clip as well. Next, select a point in the timeline where you want the animation to be complete. And then uh, basically the three clips will become one single clip again. And now we need to choose some way of getting these clips off the screen. So one way you could do it would be to decrease the opacity over time. So if I go here to the keyframe that I just made for position, rather than actually changing the position or in conjunction with it, we can keyframe the opacity, go forward a little bit, and then decrease the opacity to zero. So what that'll do is it'll make it fade out from 100% visible to 0% visible. So now that we have that keyframe set, we can just go forward a second or so and decrease the opacity to zero, setting another keyframe. So now what this will make happen is that the clip will fade out over a second or so, becoming completely invisible and making room for another clip like the moon to take center stage. So rather than doing that, 
and we can basically remove that by removing the keyframe for the zero opacity is to just have it slide off screen. So we can have the position X change, increasing that until it goes off screen. So I can slide this all the way to the right here, or we can decrease the Y as well. Now, if we decide to do this, you can see that we didn't have any crop left. So when we actually slide it out, there's a lot of hidden video information behind there. So what we might want to do is sometime earlier on, we would take the left side of this and crop it so that it doesn't actually slide out here and that when it starts sliding, it just leaves black space immediately uh, rather than taking a minute for everything to move out. So I'll just undo that position change and over here, um, about a couple seconds before the clip is going to start moving, I'll do a crop left as well. So I'll set a keyframe and now let's go forward a little bit and crop basically everything that was hidden before. So if we stop right around there, that should be good. And now when we start moving the position, it's going to immediately have black space over here. So it won't have that long sliding animation. So now let's go to the point where we wanted to actually adjust the position here and let's slide it off the screen. Okay. So now if we play this back, it should just go right off the screen after like one second, which is probably what you're looking for. So now let's make the middle clip match that in terms of animation, but reverse the direction. Uh, so because basically it's already cropped here on the right side and we're going to slide left, we don't need to worry about the crop here. So we just need to change the position X and move it off screen. So like so. So now if we play this back, the clips go in opposite direction to each other. And we just need to have the top clip fill in the void now. So for the top clip, I'm going to start by keyframing the crop bottom at the point where these two clips are going to move. Um, so I have that left to be the current crop bottom, but we're going to want to remove all of that cropping because the clip is going full screen again. So now we go forward to the point where they're off screen and we're going to set the crop bottom here to zero. So now the top clip will fill in the void. For the most part, we also need to adjust the position of it, of course. So let's frame the position at the start of the animation point, and let's reset it to zero at the end of the animation point. So if you take a look at the in-between frames of the fade-out animation, then you might notice that there is some black space here. I think it's pretty subtle in this case. But if that's actually an issue for you, then it better results if you actually take the uh, top clip that's going to become the main clip and put that on the bottom track. So if you want to avoid this issue where you have a little bit of black space in between there until the main clip fills up the screen again, one option you might want to go with is to actually take this main clip and make that the bottom clip. So because the timing is really important here, we're going to want to make sure that all of these clips keep the same timing in relation to each other. So I'm going to remove snapping here and I'm going to make sure that when I move this clip up to, let's say, track four, that when I let go of it, that the timeline indicator right next to the cursor says zero, zero, colon, zero, zero. Once again, keep making sure that it is still at that zero, zero. And now we can put this one into the middle and pull them all down. So now if we organize it like this, we can actually just remove the cropping from uh, the moon clip because since it's always going to be on bottom, we no longer need to hide the bottom parts. Uh, so let's open up the cropping window there and we'll just remove all of the cropping keyframes and change the base crop value to zero. But now in exchange, we may need to adjust the position and the crop top of these other two clips. So let's increase their cropping by a bit, let's say to 40 and bring the position down. So I'll just say negative 480 here and then copy those to the next keyframe where the positions are going to start changing and to the final keyframe as well, since the Y position on that one didn't change. And then you can play back and make sure that there's no unexpected animations here. So that looks okay. And we just need to do the same thing with the other clip. So setting the position here for negative 480, the crop top to 40 to kind of get more of that softness going in there. Um, you may even increase it a little bit beyond that. And we go to the next keyframe and make sure the white position is negative 480 there. And checking the last one as well should be negative 480. 
So now in the in-between frames of that final animation, there's still going to be a little bit of black here, so the problem isn't completely fixed yet. So what we can do to make this work is actually animate the top moon to pull its position back down to its original state before the other ones start moving. So all we really need to do is adjust the positions of the keyframes so that they start a little bit before this one starts. So let's zoom in on the timeline a bunch there. And then adjust these with snapping enabled so that when the moon has reached Y position or so, that the other ones are going to actually start their animation. So let's adjust this a little bit over here to the left. I think it was six frames that I moved this one. So now if we play this back, the moon video should be in its proper position at the point where these ones start moving out of the way and we eliminate the black space. So it looks good to me. Another way that you can actually kind of do something similar would be rather than adjusting the position that you have uh, one of the clips be zoomed in. So the one that you want to fill in the background there and eliminate the black spots, you rather than adjusting the position, you could just have it zoomed in like so. And then you would only need to set the position once. You would never need to really keyframe it. So let's just demo that by removing the other keyframes altogether. Uh, we don't actually need this initial keyframe anymore either because uh, we moved it from the top clip to the bottom clip. So it doesn't need to slide in because the other clips are sliding in place of this bottom clip. And let's just get rid of that last keyframe. And we'll just move this to be at the position where we're going to want it. If we just make it like negative 78 by default, we get a nice shot of the moon for the split screen effect. And we can just go ahead, hit play. But because it's zoomed in, it's going to have extra information space down here. So even if the position of uh, this bottom clip is not centered on the screen, but actually pulled down 78 pixels. But because it's zoomed in, we've in a sense taken a video which would fit the screen and made it fit beyond the screen. So the fact that we have the position off center is not going to leave any black space here. So we, we would have to go much further out with the positioning in order to get that black space. So by having a set position and set zoom, we don't have to adjust the position of it and we can still get the object centered on the screen that we want to be centered for that split screen effect. So when we're going through this tutorial, hopefully you can see that there's a bit of flexibility in exactly how you want to approach a split screen effect. Whether you want to take the position of your clips and keyframe that, or if you want to have your clips zoomed in so that they just fit more than the space of the screen and you never end up with black space. And when you're doing the transitions, whether you want to do that with a pure position keyframing, or if you want to mix in things like opacity, and to what extent you want to use cropping as well. But as long as you follow some reasonable combination of these things, you should be able to get multiple clips to show on screen at the same time and have it look good with transitions that lead into having a split screen and lead out of your split screen effect. So I've been Chris, thanks for watching. I hope you guys learned something from this video and I will see you guys in my future content.